Microwaves. I know, we are not talking about the type of microwave that you use to heat up your food. Well actually, those microwaves use microwaves, hence the name. Anyways, microwaves are electromagnetic waves that have a wavelength from 30 centimeters to 1 millimeter. Their frequencies range from 0.3 gigahertz to 300 gigahertz. Filters. Filters are devices that suppress electrical or sound waves of frequencies that are not required. There are four main types. Band pass, which selects a desired band of frequencies. Band stop, which eliminates an undesired band of frequencies. Low pass, which only allows frequencies below a cutoff frequency to pass. And high pass filters, which only allow frequencies above a cutoff frequency to pass. So, you may be thinking, how do these two relate? A microwave filter is a filter that operates at microwave frequencies. It can perform the same fun function as the filters I mentioned before, except microwave filters perform these same functions at microwave frequencies. This small difference makes the implementation of a microwave filter different from electronic filters because of the use of special circuit elements like transmission lines, which look like this. Are used to implement microwave filters instead of circuit elements like inductors and capacitors which would be used in electronic filters. So, how did microwave filters come about? The first significant appearance of microwave filters was in 1937 in a paper by W.P. Mason and R.A. Skypes. Major advances on microwave filters were made in various labs in the United States during World War II in the years of 1941 to 1945 at cool places like the MIT Radiation Lab, Harvard Research Radio Lab, and Bell. And now we'll talk about how filters work. Filters are designed with components that operate differently based on frequencies, such as capacitors and inductors. For example, capacitors behave as an open circuit at low frequencies and as a closed circuit at high frequencies. On the other hand, inductors behave as closed circuits at low frequencies and open circuit at high frequencies. Based on how the components are arranged, we can design four different types of filters. As mentioned before, the four types are a low pass filter, high pass filter, band pass filter, and band stop filter. And just to note, microwave filters are usually band pass filters. Here is a basic design for a band pass filter. It's a lumped element structure as the components are discrete, meaning the resistor is separate from the capacitors. But the disadvantages of a lumped element filter is that they only have a limited range that they work at. So it's hard to design high frequency filters using these components, as they only work at low frequencies. The second disadvantage is that their bandwidth is high, as their Q is low, meaning they aren't very selective. Here we have listed a couple of other filter technologies to make these filters from and overcome the previous disadvantages. The types are planar, coaxial, cavity, dielectric, and more. Most microwave filters are planar, which we'll be focusing on. Planar filters are made from distributed elements instead of lumped elements. Conductors can be made from having two microstrips short-circuited, and a capacitor can be made from parallel microstrips. The length of them will determine the parameters of the components. For example, a longer length may have a higher capacitance. And here is a diagram illustrating a translation from a lumped element design to a planar one using distributive elements. These are produced similar to printed circuit boards and are used in most microwave-related applications. They also work at higher frequencies and have a high Q factor. Now, after learning a general overview of what microfilters are, let's learn a bit more about some interesting applications of them, both in general technology uses and within the industry. So first, microwave filters are actually used in the military. Specifically, they're used in ECM systems, which stands for Electronic Countermeasure System. This system is used to detect incoming radar signals and effectively classify them by amplitude, frequency, and more. Then they will counteract these signals via defense actions such as jamming, which means the intentional emission of radio frequency signals to interfere with enemy radars by blocking the receivers with high energy signals. Pretty cool, huh? This design also splits the bandwidth up into smaller subbands. This technique is widely used in telecommunications and is called frequency division multiplexing. It is done through a multiplexer which consists of many bandpass filters where their bandpasses cross at the three decibel frequencies. Now outputs can be taken from individual signals which is a really useful product. 
Microwave filters are also widely seen in communication systems and applications. One of the applications include its use in satellite communication. Satellites are large devices that float out in space and help relay waves from one place on Earth to another. It captures signals, amplifies them, and resends them back to a receiver. Microwave filters are ideal to use as they have low insertion loss. Essentially, there is little loss in signal power when it is inserted into a larger system. Believe it or not, microwave filters are a crucial part of the proper functioning of Wi-Fi networks. Wireless networks use microwaves with frequencies of 2.4 GHz or 5 GHz to transmit signals. Using these high frequencies allow the Wi-Fi signal to transmit more data. Here's how a Wi-Fi signal works. First, data is translated into a microwave signal with the use of a computer's wireless adapter. The signal is then transmitted with the use of an antenna. The signal is received and decoded on the other end by a wireless router. The signal is then finally sent to the internet with the use of a physical wired Ethernet connection. The same process works in reverse when the signal is being sent from the internet to the user. Microwave filters, specifically bandpass microwave filters, are what allow the wireless router or wireless adapter to retrieve Wi-Fi signals removing any interference from services operating in nearby frequency bands. There are also a large variety of medical equipment and procedures that utilize microwaves to perform their primary functions. One specific medical procedure which requires the use of microwaves is the thermal ablation of tissue in which microwaves are used to create localized dielectric heating for controlled destruction of tissue. Due to the short wavelength nature of microwaves, very precise ablations suitable for the specific type of disease can be accomplished. For example, microwaves in the frequency range of 0.92 GHz and 2.45 GHz can be used for large volume ablations, while higher frequencies in the range of 5.8 GHz to 10 GHz can be used for very precise ablations. And of course, the selection of these specific output microwave frequencies to penetrate the body requires and could not be accomplished without the use of microwave filters. Thank you for tuning in to our crash course of microwave filters. Please like, subscribe, and comment.